path, there was an engineer named Carnot. All right, French engineer. And he actually figured out from very simple principles what's the maximum efficiency you could get. And this is what he said. He said, all right, I'm going to have something here. This is going to be my engine. All right. And I have something up here that's hot. Let's say it has a temperature that's hot. All right. And I'm going to take energy from this heat and put it into the engine. And this engine is going to make work. It's going to do something useful. It's going to have a piston going up and down. It's going to make wheels turn. It's going to spin a fan. It does something useful. Work. Now the thing is, as you noticed from these other faces, the engine gets hot. Well, that's no good. What happens if you don't put oil in your car, which cools the engine? All right. The engine's this thing that goes nice up and down, no oil, gets too hot, the metal melts, right? Not a good thing. You kind of throw the car away. Well, you throw the engine away. All right, in that case, it was the whole car. All right, so we have one other important part. We have to take heat out. And we take it out to some place that's cold. They might say, oh, I carry a refrigerator with me. No, no, no. The outside air can be cold. For a car, this is just the outside air. This is uh, inside the cylinder. This is the exploding gasoline. All right, that's the hot. And this transfers energy to the engine. We'll call that Q hot. This temperature is T cold, and it also transfers energy back to the environment. T cold. Simple concept. Carnot was a smart guy. These things are all energy. So I can just simply write an equation. Q hot is equal, that goes into the engine, to work, right, we'll call that W, plus Q transferred to the cold. If I want to make a really efficient engine, if I want to make an engine that works well, I want to get a lot of work out for every bit of energy I put in. That's actually my definition of efficiency. So I will have efficiency is equal to the work I get out versus the heat I put in. If that's 100% and one, one is your highest efficiency. Think of it as 100%. Right? All the work I put, all the energy I put in, I get work out. That's wonderful. This kind of engine, this number is one sixth. Well, now we can do just a little bit of math. Let's take this, let's take the Q cold over on the other side of this equation. So I have efficiency is equal to Q hot minus Q cold over Q hot. Or I can write that Q hot over Q hot is 1 minus Q cold over Q hot. Oh, ah. All right, 1 minus Q cold over Q hot. If I have something really, really hot in temperature, I can transfer more heat. If I have really something cold in temperature, I can transfer, you know, less heat. The temperature is proportional to the amount of energy I can transfer. Q is proportional to T. It's not equal to T, but it's proportional. And since it's going into the same engine, that proportionality is the same. So Q hot over Q cold, okay? Q cold over Q hot is equal to T cold over T hot. And therefore, I can write that my efficiency is equal to 1 minus the cold temperature 
over the hot temperature. And that's the best you can get. So how do I get a 100% efficient engine? Well, I make T cold zero. That doesn't mean I drive around when it's zero Fahrenheit. We went through this last time. When you're using temperature in any equation, zero means no motion. Every darn molecule is sitting still. That's absolute zero. So these temperatures have to be in Kelvin, in absolute degrees. All right? So let me give you an example of a car. So the efficiency of a car, 1 minus T cold. Well, T cold is usually the outside air. So that's, uh, let's say, the numbers I have is imagining this is on a spring day, all right? 68 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 20 degrees Celsius, which is 293 degrees Kelvin. T hot is the temperature inside the cylinder. And that might be pretty darn hot. Well, that's fire, right? 300 C. So that's 573 Kelvin. And if I take this efficiency, 1 minus 293 over 573, that's about 0 0.4. <coughs> the ideal heat engine would be 40% efficient for an automobile. <coughs> That's in a perfect world. There is no Carnot engine. Engineers have been trying a long time. They've been trying to make the best, most efficient cars, most efficient engines, most efficient cycles. There's a steam engine. It's not as good as the cycle that's used in your automobile. All right? But they can't quite get there. So your car isn't 40%. You have a lot of things that get warm, a lot of gear transferring until you get to the wheel. Thing after thing after thing starts knocking that down. And it's more like 20, maybe 25 in some super sleek, very underpowered, no fun to drive at all, but looks cool car.